Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'll be going over the domain name system and how it works. So on the internet, computers communicate using IP addresses. And an IP address is just a series of numbers that uniquely identifies a device on the internet or a local network. So if I wanted to go onto a website on the internet, I would have to know the IP address of the web server that hosts that website and has all the web content I'm looking for. And as you can imagine with all the millions of websites out there, it would be pretty awful to have to know the IP address and memorize it for every website we wanted to visit. So DNS allows us to not ever have to worry about the IP addresses, but we just have to memorize the domain names, which are a lot more memorable and human readable. So we would just type in a domain name like youtube.com and we would let DNS handle resolving that domain name to the IP address we need and then we would get the web content we're looking for. So the domain name system is a worldwide network of servers that is responsible for mapping domain names to IP addresses. So for every registered domain name out there like youtube.com or Facebook all have corresponding IP addresses. And these IPs refer to the web server that that content is hosted on. And so you can think of DNS as like a phone book where you have all your contacts and you have the names for the contacts and the actual number for it. So you could just memorize all the different numbers of all your contacts, but it'd be much easier to just remember the name of the contact and let your phone resolve that contact name to the number. And so DNS works with the same way, but with domain names and IP addresses. So how does DNS actually resolve the domain name to an IP? Well, let's look at a DNS query. So when you go in your browser and you type in a domain name like facebook.com, your browser will first make a request to the DNS resolver. And the resolver is just a server out there on the internet that is responsible for taking a domain name and resolving it to an IP address. And it's going to do some work. And once it returns that IP, the browser will take that and make a request to the server at that IP. And it will then retrieve the web content it's looking for. So this is kind of the basic flow. And this resolver does quite a bit of work to get this value back. So let's look at a more in-depth example of what actually happens. So again, you have your browser and you make a request to a domain name. Now, the first thing that happens is your computer actually looks at the DNS cache and the DNS cache is just temporary storage of your previous DNS lookups. And so if it finds it youtube.com in the cache, it'll use the cache value and not continue with the whole DNS lookup process. So if it's not found in the cache, it'll then make the request to the resolver and then the resolver will go through the DNS hierarchy. And that's made up of three parts. The first part is the root server. So the resolver is going to make a request to the root server and the root server is responsible for taking in the domain name and returning the necessary TLD server IP. And that stands for top level domain server IP. So it's going to take in the domain name and look at the top level domain, which is .com in our case, it could be .org or .net. And it'll return the IP address for the .com TLD server. The resolver is then going to take that IP and make a request to the TLD server at this IP. And the TLD server for .com in our case is gonna store all the authoritative name server IPs within that TLD. So for all .com domains, it's gonna store the authoritative name servers. And it'll look for youtube.com in here and return the authoritative name server for youtube.com. The resolver is then going to go to the last level, which is the authoritative name server. And the authoritative name server has the actual domain name and the info, like the IP address or the DNS records. So finally, the authoritative name server will return the IP address for YouTube.com, which will then get sent to the resolver, which will then pass it back to the browser. And then again, the browser will go to the server at this IP address and retrieve the web content for YouTube. Lastly, it'll cache this value in the DNS cache so that next time you look up youtube.com, it won't go through this whole process um, until the cache is invalidated. So that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. It would help me out a ton. And I'll see you guys in the next one.